Chapter 3, just enough physics. Okay, the goal here is to do 2D and 3D stuff, 3D stuff, two vectors. And so today we're going to get into treating forces as vectors. Okay, let's just jump right into the problem and we'll get it done. Okay, now I apologize because this isn't exactly what I wanted, but let's just do this problem anyway. Suppose I have an inclined plane. It has an angle of theta degrees. And I have a block of ice sitting here. Now it's ice, so that means that there's no friction. So let's just find the acceleration of this block. That's what I'm gonna do first. And then I'm gonna find the force that I'd need to push this way to keep it up. Um, okay, number one, we're gonna draw a free body diagram for this block. So a free body diagram uh, starts with this block as a point. Until later, we're going to treat objects as point masses. Uh, and so they have no dimensions. That's a little weird, but very useful, it turns out. So just, just bear with me here. Now I want to draw all the forces acting on this I'm gonna draw those forces as vector arrows. Now, there are two kinds of forces that you will see in introductory physics. Number one is long range force. A long range force uh, doesn't have to touch in order to have an interaction. Uh, so the two that you may see, the, th the three that you may see, the gravitational force, um, the electrostatic force, the magnetic force, okay? Uh, and then the other one is a contact force. So in this case, there's only one long range force on this mass right here, it has a mass M. And that's the gravitational force. So that pulls straight down and it has a magnitude M, G. And so here I'm using G, the vector G. Oh, I'm sorry, I did contact forces, two, two kinds. Where G is the vector zero, negative 9.8, zero newtons per kilogram. Okay, so uh, remember this has a negative y component, but we don't say the vector g is negative. And if I do write g all by itself, then I say g equals 9.8 newtons per kilogram. It's the magnitude of that vector, so magnitudes are positive. Okay, so the, in this case, the gravitational interaction with the Earth, the Earth doesn't have to touch it. It's a product of the object's mass and g, which is due to the Earth and the distance from the center of the Earth. Okay, now the other force acting on this is a contact force. In the case of a plane, we have something that's called a normal force. So this normal force is going to, I'll draw it right here first, is like that. It's perpendicular to the surface. And we usually use the vector n. Now, I apologize. This is where I didn't like to um, do this. I mentioned before, I think in chapter 2, this idea of a calculated force, and then a force of constraint. So a calculated force would be like this. I can just, I know the parameters, I put in the parameters, I get the force. A force of constraint is like this. It, it could be anything. This force could be essentially almost anything. It depends on the situation. So this normal force prevents the block from accelerating into into the plane. That's why it's perpendicular to the plane. And its magnitude is whatever it needs to do in order to keep that force, uh, that block, out of the plane. So there is no equation. You just have to say, okay, I know the block's not going to accelerate this way, and now I can find that force. But other than that, that's my, that's my force diagram. That's it. Okay. That's my free body diagram. Now, the other thing that we need to do is to pick our coordinate axis. I'm going to pick, let's see, should I pick... I feel like picking what I normally pick. Yeah, let's pick this. Let's call that X and that Y. So uh, the coordinate axis is not real, so you can pick whatever you want. Now, it turns out that it's easier for you if you pick the axis such that one of the axes is in the direction of the acceleration. So this thing's gonna actually start sliding down the plane and so it's going to accelerate this way. And so the acceleration will be in the x-axis. That's why I picked that. 
Okay, one last thing. I need to know this angle right there. Okay. It turns out that angle is theta. So if let's just do this. If I draw this like that, then I know that's a right angle. So that's theta. That's theta sub c. Now if I draw um, this, then I get a similar triangle. That's theta sub c. Uh, this is, I didn't draw it very well. That's a right angle, so that's theta. I know it wasn't really good, but that you'll see this enough that that's what that is. Okay, so now let's write down our uh, force equation. So this says F net equals MA. And so what forces do we have? We have N plus MG equals MA. Yes, plus. Remember, yet, even though this is a force in the negative y direction, it's still a, we're adding the vectors. Okay, so. Now, what do we know here? I know a couple of things. I know the vector for the acceleration. A equals AX zero, zero. I know that the acceleration in the x direction is something, but it is not accelerating in the y direction because it's constrained to that plane. Okay, so that has to be zero and z too. It's not moving in and out of the board. Okay, so uh, what else do I know? I know g, I know mg. So let's just write this. Let's just write this equation out as a vector. So I have nx, ny, and there's no force in the z direction, zero, plus uh, m times zero, negative 9.8, zero, I'm leaving off the units, equals m ax, zero, zero. Now in order for uh, these this vector equation to work, the x components all have to be equal, the y components have to all be equal. So let's just write out the x component. So I get nx plus zero equals max. And then if I write out the y, I get ny minus mg, I'll just write it as g where that's 9.8, equals zero. So now I have ny. So I know ny is equal to mg. Now what about nx? Now there is one other thing I know about nx. Wait. Oh, I did this wrong. Yeah, I did this in the, uh, I used this axis because I did that. Hmm. Should I start over or just keep going? Let's, let's fix it. Okay, so now this is wrong, right? Okay, so I have, let's put it on a piece of paper right here. There, so I have to fix my mistake. Actually, fix it with this thing. Fix my mistake. Okay, so I have, that's A, it is in the X direction. I did say that, that's right. Uh, N is the vector n x n y zero that's right uh the m g is going to be equal to now in this case uh the there is some x component and there is some y component okay so this is going to be m times g times the sine of theta times i'm sorry that's right minus cosine theta zero so if i look at this this side is going to be the adjacent side of the triangle, so that's going to be the cosine of theta, and this is going to be the opposite, so that's going to be sine theta. Okay, so now let's look at just the x-coordinate. So I have nx, um, then plus mg sine theta, and equals max. But nx, I'm sorry, nx is actually zero. I made another mistake. I can't. <laughs> I don't remember writing it this way. So okay, so that's zero. So there we already have the acceleration. Ax equals g sine theta. That is correct. Okay. Now what about the 
uh, the normal force. So I know that uh, in the y direction, I have ny minus mg cosine theta equals m times zero. So ny is mg cosine theta. So now I get this. I get the acceleration. It's going to be equal to uh, g sine theta, zero, zero meters per second squared. And I know the normal force is going to be uh, zero mg cosine theta, zero. Okay, that wasn't that great. But I have a much better problem for you in the next video. So uh, we'll do one more force problem and it'll redeem myself because this one was a little messy. Okay. Oh, subscribe, like, Patreon, all that stuff. I get tired of saying it, but it's there. Okay, bye.